In the beginning, there was only chaos. Into this nothingness came the Golden Goddesses, three primordial omnipotent beings. These three are the most powerful entities in Zelda canon. Din, the goddess of power, created the land itself. Nehru, goddess of wisdom, created science and magic. And Faror, goddess of courage, created life. With their great work completed, the Golden Goddesses departed for the heavens, but not before leaving a symbol of their power, the Triforce. Three golden triangles, each representing a virtue of their creators. The Triforce shared the limitless powers of the goddesses, designed to guide the mortals who would inherit their world. It's able to grant any wish, and serves as the foundation for the world's providence. To protect the Triforce, the goddesses left behind another divine creation, Hylia, another goddess who would serve as its guardian. For an age, the goddess lived among mortals in the land that would become Hyrule, a time of prosperity known as the Era of the Goddess Hylia. But all things must be balanced, and a darkness emerged to challenge the light. A being known as Demise, the Demon King, tore his way from a fissure in the earth, and waged war against Hylia in an attempt to take the Triforce for himself. Like the Golden Goddesses, we don't know the origins of Demise. While they are forces of creation, the Demon King is a primordial force of destruction, the source of all monsters. A war ensued, ending with Demise sealed and Hylia mortally wounded. So the Goddess planned for a hero to rise and defeat the Demon King when his seal inevitably faltered. She created Phi, a guiding spirit, and, crucially, gave up her divinity, so that her soul could one day be reborn as a mortal. This leads us into the first game in the official timeline, Skyward Sword, where Link, a student of the Knights Academy on Skyloft, and Zelda, the daughter of the school's headmaster, learn that they are part of the ancient goddess's plan. Zelda learns that she is Hylia reborn, and Link trains to become the goddess's chosen hero, forging Hylia's sword into the Master Sword, and tempering his spirit in order to wield the might of the Triforce. Demise is resurrected by his servant Girahim, but is defeated by Link. However, with his dying breath, Demise curses Link and Zelda. He dooms those like them to be forever haunted by an incarnation of his hatred. Thus begins an endless cycle of reincarnation, binding the series' main trio together for all time. Demise's hatred would manifest in beings like Ganon and Maladus, but each time would be met by a princess with the blood of the goddess, and a warrior with the spirit of the hero. The exact order and details of the events following Skyward Sword have been lost to the mists of time, but include the founding of the Kingdom of Hyrule, and a series of conflicts which serve as the foundations of later later games in the series. The Interloper War occurred when the Triforce's limitless power tempted a powerful clan of magic wielders, sorcerers who had created a weapon known as the Fused Shadow. They tried to claim the sacred realm where the Triforce lay for themselves, and were only stopped by the Light Spirits, who were able to seal this clan in another world, to imprison them in darkness forever. Another early conflict is the War of the Bound Chest. Monsters appeared from nowhere and assailed the kingdom, until an unknown warrior, another who shared the spirit of the hero with the Link from Skyward Sword, appeared to fight for Hyrule. He was assisted by the Picori, tiny, magical beings, who gave him the Light Force, a golden power separate from the Triforce, and the Picori Blade, a magical sword separate from the Master Sword. This hero of men was able to defeat the monsters, and seal them within a chest. This war leads into the second game in the timeline, the Minish Cap where Vati, an evil Picori transformed by a powerful artifact, opens the bound chest in search of the Light Force. Link finds the legendary Picori Blade and imbues it with the powers of the elements, transforming it into the Four Sword and defeats Vati. At some point following the Minish Cap, the Wind Mage returns, until he is sealed in the Four Sword by an unseen hero. This sets up Four Swords, where Vati breaks free of the blade and is again sealed by an incarnation of Link. What follows is one of the bloodiest events in Hyrule's history, the Civil War. 
The details of this terrible conflict are few. All we know for certain is that the war ended with the country once again unified under the King of Hyrule. The leader of the Gerudo tribe, Ganondorf, swears fealty to the king, though in secret he plans to gain access to the sacred realm where the Triforce was hidden. Ocarina of Time begins, and the Hero of Time beats Ganondorf to the sacred realm, but the King of Thieves follows him. Ganondorf reaches the Triforce, but as his heart was imbalanced, it separates into its three constituent pieces. The Gerudo King receives only the Triforce of Power, while the Triforces of Courage and Wisdom are bestowed upon Link and Zelda respectively. Another twist is that Link is too young to wield the Master Sword, and so he's sealed within the Sacred Realm for seven years. And for these seven years, Ganondorf uses the Triforce of Power to dominate Hyrule. Link emerges from the Temple of Time into a nightmare, and begins his journey to awaken the Six Sages. Ganondorf uses his piece of the Triforce to transform into the monstrous Ganon, but even this isn't enough to stop Link and with the power of the sages, Ganondorf is sealed in a void in the Sacred Realm. Ocarina of Time marks the end of the linear Zelda timeline. What follows from here is three separate, alternate histories. The first is the simplest, the adult timeline, which follows on directly from Ganon's defeat and imprisonment by the sages. However, after this victory, Link is sent back through time by Princess Zelda, back to before he pulled the Master Sword, so that he could live the seven years of his childhood that he lost. But he doesn't do this. Link chooses to warn a young Princess Zelda about Ganondorf's plans to betray Hyrule, which changes the course of history. Ganondorf is now stopped from ever reaching the Sacred Realm and the Triforce of Power, preventing his seven-year rule from ever occurring. This means that the original timeline becomes separate from this new, child timeline, but both are equally real, canonical series of events, running parallel to one another. The adult timeline, which Link left, continues without him. Ganondorf eventually breaks free of his seal and returns to terrorize Hyrule. But as Link was sent back through time and altered the past, no hero rises to meet him. And so, in a rare example of divine intervention, the goddesses are forced to flood the kingdom to stop his assault, and Hyrule is forgotten at the bottom of a new ocean. Centuries later, the story of the hero of time and the Great Flood has become a distant myth, a myth which becomes the foundation for the events of the Wind Waker, when Ganon, now again in his Gerudo King form, but still very much the same man from Ocarina of Time, rises from the depths and begins searching for the Triforce. A new hero, unrelated to the previous, emerges to fight him, and kills him with the Master Sword. Hyrule is finally let go, so that a new generation can thrive. Link and Zelda, known as Tetra, sail for new lands. They're attacked by Bellum, leading to the events of Phantom Hourglass, but eventually settle and found the imaginatively named New Hyrule, where, a hundred years later, Spirit Tracks takes place. The defeat of Maladus at the hands of a new Link and Zelda marks the end of the adult timeline so far. So let's move to the altered history the Hero of Time created. Ganondorf was stopped from taking over, but this also erased Link's deeds as a hero, and led to his companion, Navi, vanishing. The Hero of Time leaves Hyrule in search of his only friend, where he's ambushed by a possessed Skull Kid and ends up in the parallel land of Termina, leading to the events of Majora's Mask. Meanwhile, in Hyrule, a series of events eventually led to the imprisonment of Ganondorf, thanks to Link warning Zelda about his betrayal. He was to be executed by the sages at the Arbiter's Grounds, but in some divine prank, the Triforce of Power awakened within him. This could be because Link had travelled back from the adult timeline while still in possession of his Triforce of Courage, causing the Triforce in this child era to split, even without anyone accessing the Sacred Realm. Regardless, this prevented Ganondorf's death, and with no other option, the sages banished him into the same dimension the interlopers had been sent long ago, the Twilight Realm. 
From here, Ganondorf manipulates and empowers Zant, a member of the Interloper clan who usurps the Twilight's throne. And much later, Ganondorf uses Zant to mount an invasion of Hyrule, but is stopped and killed outright by a new Link, a descendant of the Hero of Time. This Link, the Hero of Twilight, is guided by his ancestor, whose spirit lives on as the hero's shade. Finally, we have Four Swords Adventures, where Varty yet again breaks free of his seal. This time, though, it's because of the meddling of Ganon, albeit a completely different Ganon to the Gerudo King seen in previous games, another manifestation of Demise's hatred. A reincarnated Ganondorf steals a magical trident from a pyramid and uses it to transform, but is stopped by another hero wielding the Four Sword. This ends the Child timeline, the second outcome of Ocarina of Time. But there's a third. An entire branch of Zelda games exist following an alternate what-if scenario, one where Link dies during the final battle against Ganondorf. This results in a dark version of the adult timeline ending, where Ganondorf transforms and is sealed in the Sacred Realm by the Sages, but takes the entire Triforce with him. This leads into A Link to the Past, where Ganon creates an alter ego, Aghanim, to manipulate his way out of the Sacred Realm, now called the Dark World. He's stopped by an incarnation of Link, the hero of legend, who goes on to have multiple other adventures. He gets shipwrecked and pulled into the Windfish's dream in Link's Awakening, and thwarts Twin Rover's attempt to resurrect Ganon in the Oracle games. Long after this comes A Link Between Worlds, where a kingdom in a parallel dimension, known as Lowrule, attempts to steal Hyrule's Triforce to restore their land, and Triforce Heroes, set in the distant land of Hytopia, both featuring the same Link. Following this is a long period of decline. Hyrule shrinks until it is but a shadow of its former glory. It's in this withered kingdom that the very first Zelda games take place. Zelda 1 and Adventure of Link, showing the same hero first rescue Princess Zelda and defeat Ganon, then prove his worth and obtain the Triforce of Courage. This marks the end of the Zelda timeline as we know it. But, of course, there are two more games to place, Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. These games don't appear on the official Zelda timeline. They take place so ridiculously far in Hyrule's future that all other games before them are grouped into what is called the Era of Myth. It doesn't matter which, if any, of Ocarina of Time's three branches these games occur in. Too much time has passed for it to matter. Matter. For millennia, Hyrule has been plagued by a timeless evil, the Calamity Ganon. Long before Breath of the Wild, but still long, long after the rest of the timeline, the Calamity returns, and is sealed with the help of the technologically advanced Sheikah tribe's war machines. 10,000 years later, Ganon returns, seizes control of the Sheikah tech, and uses it to decimate Hyrule. A hundred years after this Great Calamity, Link emerges from the Shrine of Resurrection, journeys through the wilderness, and, with the help of Zelda, seals the beast. However, Tears of the Kingdom reveals the truth. Link and Zelda discover that the source of Calamity Ganon is the mummified, imprisoned body of Ganondorf, another separate Ganondorf to the ones from Ocarina of Time and Four Swords Adventures. Zelda is transported back to the past, to a time shortly after the Kingdom of Hyrule was founded by Sonya, a Hylian, and Roru, one of the Zonai, an advanced people who once lived in the sky, said to be descended from the gods themselves, making this a different Roru to the Sage of Light seen in Ocarina of Time. Here, Zelda witnesses another conflict known as the Imprisoning War, where Ganondorf is sealed by Roru. The founding of the original Hyrule occurred sometime between Skyward Sword and the Minish Cap, but if that is the time Zelda travels back to in Tears of the Kingdom, it would mean that this Ganondorf predates the one seen in Ocarina of Time, and that his body was sealed underground for most of the canonical timeline. So, in my opinion, the most likely scenario is that this is actually a second founding of Hyrule, taking place once all previous games, and the kingdom they took place in, had long since faded into myth. 
Two of the three timeline branches end with Hyrule in severe decline or outright destroyed, so this is a strong possibility. Either way, this new imprisoning war begins a cycle of prosperity and destruction, until the Great Calamity and the rise of the Hero of the Wild. And finally, the Zelda timeline ends with the final battle of Tears of the Kingdom, where Link defeats Ganondorf and his final form as the Demon Dragon, and frees Hyrule from tens of thousands of years of torment. Stop the clock. So there's the entire Zelda timeline summarised in 15 minutes. While it does get a little bit messy, especially with Tears of the Kingdom's time travel revelations, for the most part it does make sense. There's been an increasing sentiment recently that these games can't be reasonably connected that the canon Zelda timeline, a chronological ordering of the games, doesn't matter, and was only published by Nintendo to pander to the online Zelda fanbase. This isn't true. While Zelda games are at their best as individual adventures, there's something so magical about the connections between them, seeing games we've played become legends in-universe. If you want a chill way to relive the whole Zelda timeline, then head on over to my new channel, Zeldudes, where Zelda Master and myself are playing through the entire series in timeline order, beginning, of course, with Skyward Sword HD. The channel also features a podcast where we discuss anything and everything Zelda related at length, so if you're looking for more Zelda content, that's the place to go. Cheers guys, and I'll see you next time.